This is my physics EE gyroscope experiment. A gyroscope is basically any wheel spinning at high speeds. So this, which can spin up to thousands of RPM, is a gyroscope. It's also 1.2 kilograms, so it has a lot of angular momentum when spinning fast. The microcontroller is constantly adjusting the speed with a velocity sensor, so it uh, has a magnet embedded in the wheel and then a magnetic sensor here. So each time it passes, it can sense the time for one rotation and calculate the speed. And with that, it adjusts the speed through this motor. So we have very accurate speed control. And then here we have a stepper motor, which can turn this force sensor. So it can this thing can sense the force in this direction. So it senses the force of contact here. And basically this feeds the force into the microcontroller and the motor will either apply more pressure or less pressure depending on if the force is greater or less than what you set it to be. So it'll apply a very accurate force down to 0 0.01 Newton meter and very accurate uh, angular velocity down to about plus or minus one radian per second. So let's see it in action. First, I'll explain what the right hand rule is. This basically allows you to predict the direction of precession, which is when a gyroscope turns around another axis other than its spin axis. For example, let's start this up. If this is spinning in this direction, it, and that spin axis is also spinning in this direction, we have precession. So I'm just gonna set it to a slow speed for now. Okay, so this is 50 radians per second. Right now, the gyroscope is spinning in that direction. If I do this, it's processing because the gyroscope's spin axis is turning around a second axis. The right-hand rule basically says that you find the direction of the angular momentum with your right hand. So you wrap your right hand around the spin direction. So my right hand goes this way. So the angular momentum is pointing towards me. So I'm gonna keep my left hand there. Now you have to find the direction of the torque with the same thing. So let's say the torque is down here. So the torque is gonna be that way. Basically we have that this vector here is going to follow the torque. So the whole thing is gonna turn this way. Let's see what happens when we press here or we pull here. Okay, so I'm gonna pull here. See, we have that, that vector turning this way. It's exactly as predicted by the right hand rule. Now, let's go to some higher speeds and see the effects. This here is 200 radians per second. So it'll be a bit slower precession now but it'll only turn around that axis, not at all when I'm pushing it. So like that, see how this is not turning around at all in the direction I'm pushing it in, only this Z axis. So we see precession in action right here. And then there. If I push this way down, it should turn that way. Again, that happens. So the right hand rule is very accurate. Now, this allows us to measure quantitatively the precession by creating a set torque here. So let's set it to 0 0.1 newton meters. Okay, so have this here. I'm going to set it. I put it just above here. Now it's going to start lowering until it makes contact. And then we see that it's turning in that direction as expected. So this is going quite slowly. That's also because I'm not pulling it hard enough so the wire is um, falling down. but. Yeah, normally you see something like this. Okay, 
And then to measure that, we have this uh, speed sensor down here, which just measures the speed of rotation of this axis here. Now it's done, so it, it's no longer applying force. But when force is applied, we are tracking the speed of rotation here through the wireless sensor, and also the speed of rotation, which is basically just to make sure that it stayed in uh, very level. So this isn't really as important. This is just to make sure it stayed level. But this is the main one, and it tracks the speed of rotation. From all this, we're able to verify the equation of precession, which says that the angular velocity of precession, so the one in this direction, is proportional to the torque applied here and inversely proportional to the speed the gyroscope is spinning at in this direction. It also says that it's inversely proportional to the moment of inertia of the gyroscope. We're not going to verify that part, but the rest we did verify and the results were great. Here's another example of precession. So instead of pressing up or down here, I'm going to press only this way or this way. And this actually shows it maybe even clear, more clearly. So I'm going to press that way. And we're going to see that the gyroscope just it doesn't move at all in this direction. It just tilts upwards. And then once it gets here, we have no control anymore because we're basically just spinning the gyroscope in its own spin direction, which it doesn't really have much of an impact. And then once we get there, it goes the other way.